Another test that we perform here in the main lab is a CICLDEX. A CICLDEX is actually a qualitative screening test for the absence or presence of abnormal hemoglobin in the red blood cells. So basically the concept is based on the fact that if you inherit an abnormal hemoglobin S that is contained in the red cell, when they are exposed into a very low level amount of oxygen, this abnormal hemoglobin S, if present, it will convert, it will be converted into a very insoluble tactoid formation that can be viewed as a turbid solution. All other normal hemoglobins will be cleared with this reagent, and so that is the basis of this principle why we're doing this thesis. It's a simple procedure where we are using this solution, Cicodex, uh, that contains a, an active ingredient known as sodium metabisulfide. What it does is basically it will convert the environment of the solution to a very low oxygen so that if you have abnormal hemoglobin S, they will, be, they will become insoluble and turbid, okay? So when you combine this solution containing the active ingredient by putting 2 ml of this solution containing the active ingredient and 20 microliters of a whole blood. It's a very simple procedure. Okay, so this is one, 100, 1 ml. So we are going to take 2 ml. So 1 for the positive control. So that's 1 ml and 2 ml, okay, so that is for your positive control, and then one for your normal control. So basically 2 ml of this active solution containing sodium metabisulfite, a powerful reducing agent, and then for your patient. So it is important to always run a positive and negative control in all your testing to check for the efficiency of your agents, whether it's working properly or not, okay? So once you have the buffer solution, then we can now place 20 microliters of a whole blood. So we are going to take 20 microliters of whole blood. So this is for the patient. Mix it properly. Vigorously shaking to allow the lysis of the red blood cells so that if you have an abnormal hemoglobin S in the sample, it will turn your solution into a turbid, insoluble consistency. And later, you will see the effect of that if it turns out to be positive. But if it's negative, it will turn out, it will clear the solution because all normal hemoglobins are soluble in sodium metabisulfite solution, okay? So for the positive and negative controls, the same thing, we are using a known positive and a known negative uh, control 
which can be treated as patient sample. Okay, so allow this to stand for 10 minutes, and after 10 minutes, this is the end product. If it's positive, okay, you cannot see the lines through your solution. If it's negative, that means all hemoglobins, okay, are dissolved. That means you don't have abnormal hemoglobin S in the sample. So if you can see, okay, this is the positive control. So basically, you really cannot see the line, the black lines through your tube. That means there is a present presence of abnormal hemoglobin S, okay? Whereas in your negative control, you can see the black lines through your test tube. So now for the test, so this is negative, okay? Because you can see the black lines through the test tube. As simple okay, as that. Okay. Okay. Now the next procedure that we usually do in the lab is making a thin blood film. Why we do this? Because we want to make sh we want to see the morphology or the shapes of the blood cells. We stain them and then by looking under the microscope we'll be able to see whether you have an abnormal cell or a normal cell. Basically, we do this to screen for abnormal cells that will help the doctor in diagnosing or identify blood diseases, okay? So I'm gonna show you what is important in blood film is that you need a slide, a glass slide, and you have to make sure that you are going to select another slide to be used as a spreader. A spreader slide has to be with a soft edge, no crack at the edge of the slide. So one clue to make a good blood film is by selecting a good spreader slide. Another one is that the angle of your spreader slide will determine how thick or uh, how thick your smear is or how thin your smear is. So if you increase the angle of your spreader slide, it will give you a very thick smear. So if you have a very low angle in this way of your spreader slide, your smear will be very long. So it makes you ideally, it should be at least 45 degree angle, such as this one. And by, over time, when you are experienced enough, you will be able to adjust your spreader slide according to, to the consistency of your sample. If you have a very low hemoglobin content of your sample by just looking at the sample itself, you'll be able to judge whether you need to increase the angle or you need to decrease the angle in order to adjust the thickness or thinness of your smear. So now I'm going to, so I'm going to show you how to make a blood flow. First, is we are going to mix the whole blood so that the distribution of the cells will be consistent and uniform. So, we'll take enough amount of sample, just a small drop would be enough, ideally five microliters, in order for you to make a good blood flow. Drop it into the edge of the smear of the slide, okay? Do not allow the blood to stay very long time because it will dry up. And then, in a very quick and easy manner, spread it in a very consistent motion without moving, so ideally, this is how a blood film looks like. Okay, it's not a perfect one, but it's good enough. Ideally, it should have a tongue-shaped 
comprising at least two thirds of the smear. If it's too long or too short, it's not acceptable. The last step in making a blood film is to label them. Do not pre-label your slide because there is a high chance that you might you know, mislabel them, especially when you're dealing with multiple samples. So, label them according to the tube of your patient sample. And the final product would be like this. Okay. It contains the barcode of the sample. This is how we do it here. And then the medical record number of the patient, which is unique for each and every patient, and the date when you made the blood film. Completely dried. Now, after drying, this blood film will now be ready for fixing. Fixing means to preserve the cell before staining. Once stained, okay, it's now ready for morphological examination. And to give you the final end product, how a blood film looks like after staining is this, film, which is done automatically because we have two kinds of blood smear preparation. This is manual and this one is automatic, okay? But just to give you an idea how a blood film looks like, and then this now is ready for examination under the microscope. And to give you an idea how they look like under the microscope is, I'll show you. This is how your finished product, when you view that blood film under the microscope. As you can see, after staining, all your cells are well differentiated. You have the, your red blood cells and your different white blood cell populations. You don't need to know them by now, but over time you'll be able to know what these cells are.